What's up YouTube and welcome to another draw along with me where today we're going to go ahead and create some really minimalistic painting styles of your pets. Now you can do this with any type of animal, it doesn't just have to be a dog, but I've left a link in the description down below to the reference image I've used which is this one here on the right hand side and we're just going to create these really fun designs. So have some fun with it most importantly, be sure to share your designs with me over on Instagram when you're done and as always thank you so much for watching and with all that said, let's get started. So today's canvas size wants to be the 2000 by 2000 mark and your background color. So this option here, if you tap on it and then go ahead and go up to the settings icon here, you will then get this hexadecimal and you're gonna to wanna to type this code in. I'll put it on the screen now. You can type in the hexadecimal and you'll see it change to that slightly off white color. So let's hit create. So once you're in your canvas, the first thing we wanna do is add the photograph of the dog. So we're gonna to go to our options. We're gonna to go to import. And we're going to go ahead and use our photos and find the photo in our gallery. Once you've found the photo, just tap on it and it will give you the option here to import it as a reference or as a layer. And we're going to go ahead and add it as a layer. So we'll tap on that and then we'll get the image here in the background and hit the tick when you're done. So then we'll tap on this image and we'll just drop the opacity down and we'll drop it down to around about sort of 60% just so it's a little bit transparent. Then we're going to go ahead and create a new layer. We're going to go to our brush. We're going to go to the option of pens. And then in the pens, we're going to want to go ahead and find the dry inker brush. And then you're going to want to go ahead and change your color. So we'll tap on our color and the hexadecimal again. So if you're in the disk view here, just change it to the settings view. And then in the hexadecimal here, we're going to type in the code 2D, 2D, 2D. So 2D, 2D, 2D. And this is a slightly off black color. And that's all the colors we need for today's actual design. The rest will be taken from the photograph. And the brush size, I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller. I'm gonna make it around about sort of the eight to nine marker. So I've got 9.3 on here at the moment. We want some nice, small, nice scribbles. And so what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna identify the main areas of the dog. So if we zoom in, for example, on the nose, we've got this little bridge down the middle and we wanna go ahead and just draw that in down the center there. We're gonna draw in the arcs for the nostrils, like so. And then from there, we're gonna go ahead and just draw in the whole rest of the design. So we'll go round the nose, and go all the way around, going all the way around and in towards your starting point. If you have little gaps or different areas of weight, I think that looks great, I think it's fine. Now, if we take a look at here, we've got this sort of area here where there's a bit of a highlight just in this space here. So we want to avoid adding some of these darker tones in there. So I'm just going to start here and just do some scribbling in this space here. I'm going to go all the way around underneath the nostril. I'm also going to chuck in some color here too. Now place that in there and likewise underneath this nostril as well. And then I'm going to follow my scribble all the way around. And you can get as close as you can towards the edge, but try not to run out of it. But a little gap will look quite nice. It will sort of match up to the aesthetic that we're going for. And we're going to go ahead and just scribble across the top here, go all the way around and kind of repeat. So we just go down in this gap here, go all the way around. And then we'll just go ahead and leave that highlight space and just add in some color here. So just keeping it nice and simple, nice and loose and just nice and fun. So don't want to be stressing about it too much. And if you tilt your pen anyway, if you've got tilt sensitivity like I do, you can get a much narrower head on the brush. And if we zoom out, you'll end up with this really cool cartoony look to the nose. If we zoom in, we can then go ahead and take a look at some of the other features of the face. For example, round here. So I'm gonna go round the bottom of the lip here, link that up. And I'll also go from here too. I'll go all the way around. Let that just run up the other side. We then got the bottom lip. So we can go along from side to side. And we've got this much darker area here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and again, just tilt my brush and just create some nice little sort of zigzags from that point outwards. And then the odd little sort of strokes that just run astray because they will then nicely blend into that area. And then looking at this part now, we've got this sort of darker area around the nose. So we wanna go ahead and add in some color to show exactly that. So I'm gonna rotate my canvas because it'll be easier doing it in the direction that you're going in. 
And we're just gonna create lots and lots of little flicks just to show these little areas of hair. So little dashes and flicks until you basically fill up the whole area in the same sort of area that the photograph has. So we're just gonna keep going. Towards the middle, they start to sort of go down rather than at an angle. So I'm rotating my lines that I'm drawing in as I go round. Just gonna do the same over here too. So once we get a few more of these in, we're gonna make our way round the nose. We wanna nicely fill in the whole space, but not too dense so that it's really dark. We wanna keep it fairly, fairly light on the coverage. We just wanna just make sure that the user knows who's looking at this photo that the, uh, there is a much darker patch around this dog's mouth. So lots and lots of little dashes here. I'm trying to keep a lot of them fairly thin. So if you're struggling with your pressure or you don't have pressure sensitivity, just lower your opacity down. So tap on this one here and lower the opacity down. That will then allow you to create nice little softer lines. But if your pressure sensitivity isn't there either, you may want to go ahead and reduce the brush size down just to compensate for that a little bit more. For reference, I'm using an iPad Pro and the Apple Pencil as well, which does have pressure and tilt sensitivity in it by default. So if we take a look at that, we then got this lovely little area here around the nose and we can then just continue to create these little dashes all the way around the nose. So just little flicks. I'm just trying to keep them real scribbly in a sense, but not cluster my color. I want to just create those nice little dashes that just run all the way around, like the odd little sort of streak and scribble. Little streaks here and there. And it doesn't have to match up perfectly. It's just a, a fun style of how you can sort of memorialize your pets in some way. And then up here on the top of the nose, we want to add in some more dashes. So I'm just going to add in a couple of flicks off here, just little scribbles and Occasionally like a little scribble like up and down, but then obviously still some dashes I don't want to add too many in this space But just enough that we know that there is a little bit of detail because these lines that we add here now These are going to be the lines that really let the person know You know where the fur is where the markings are and it's a guide for you later on when we get into the coloring stage And I'm avoiding this little area in the middle because we have a really nice little sort of lighter patch just on top of the nose there. So lots of little flicks and tiny little little hairs basically just making their way outwards from there. We then have the bottom lip which is fairly dark as well so I'm also just going to go back in and just add some little sort of zigzag lines just across the lip just to darken it up a little bit and that's how you kind of create sort of a gradient of colour. You just can create lots of little uh, light scratches next to your chunky areas and that will add as like a nice little sort of blending between the two. I've got a little area of hair here too. I'm just gonna reintroduce just a couple of more flicks further up the nose like so. Then from there, we wanna go ahead and continue to isolate big areas of the face. So I'm gonna go ahead and go down here, down this edge here and come around here and just let that just run in because the skin then just naturally runs into the neck and while I'm here we'll then go ahead and sort of work on the ear as well so the ear I'm just going to go ahead and where we have nice little fuzzy areas of hair I'm just going to create little sort of zigzags and flicks like that just to show that it's a little bit fluffier rather than a, a straight line and then from there I will go ahead and just run my pen down here down in towards this corner over here as well we'll go round and follow that up towards this point here and let the pressure get really light because then up here they are a little bit fuzzier and a little bit fluffier so I can create sort of little sort of scratches and scrapes just along here that's why I like to refer to them as just along there and then on the back there as well and your brain then fills in the rest by letting you know that that is basically not quite so, so much of a solid shape but a fluffy shape under here as well in the ear, we can go into this corner here and then follow this down and just let that run into the ear. But where we've got this area here, we can go ahead and just create some little sort of zigzags and fluffiness here just to isolate the side of the head. But in this area, it's a little bit darker. So I'm going to go ahead and just darken that up. I'm just going to scribble in the majority of it underneath this line here and get up to those nice little sort of scribble lines we just made. 
which is acting as a little bit of a shadow there underneath the ear. While we're just outlining the head, we'll carry on and do exactly that. So I'm going to go ahead and go along that top line up here. We're going to run into this ear here and there's a little bit of hair here too. So I'm just going to go ahead and do the same sort of process, just like a couple of little nice zigzags. And then I'm going to go up and around. Now I'm going to do this in one motion. So I'm going to curl back on myself and follow that line and run it into there. We then have the hair here too. So they kind of just nicely just little zigzags and fluffiness. We'll come down this side of the ear as well. Down into here where we do have, again, some nice little flicks and zigzags. And then inside the ear, because this one's facing us, we can see a lot of the hair. So I'm just going to sort of create some nice zigzags and little areas of fluff in there. There's a little bit in the corner over here. And just towards the top up here too, I will just add in some scrapes. You occasionally get like a big black blob like that. If you don't like it, just erase it if needs be. And I'm just going to darken up this area here as well. Let's just carry on around the side of the face before we get into the eyes. So we're going to go ahead and go down here into there and just let that run out because that is where it runs down towards the neck. And while we're doing that, we'll go ahead and go down here. So I'm just going to create a couple of zigzags there and then let that just run down here and occasionally let my line just get really light. Maybe just let it go completely because what we want to do towards the bottom of the dog, we want to just let it naturally just run out with your pressure. So here I'll start really heavy. I'll kind of just let go a little bit and then just the odd little scrape. We don't want the user to really look down here. It's not a focal point of faces, of course. Then we can take a look at the chest as well and just see where we've got some areas of sort of zigzags and areas of fur. So there's lots of like little lines in here and you want to kind of look for the direction of where the lines are going. They kind of spread out from underneath the neck here. So I can just like add in a couple here down the middle and just these tiny little scrapes will just be enough. And I'm just going to change my brush to the 7.4 now and just add in a few more scrapes down here in these areas. So I can add a bit more pressure here and make these lines a little bit bolder. We've got a little tuft of hair here. And then we're just looking for areas that we can maybe just add a little bit of filler to basically. So I can see there's a few hairs here. I can just add some little flicks here and there. Over here on the left, we've got a little tuft of hair here. We've got another one over here. You can see how quick and easy I'm being with it. You don't have to stress about it too much. Nice little flicks and scratches just to show the movement of the fur and where it's sort of running to. So that one runs off a little bit to the left. So it curls out that way. And I'll add a little one over here too. It's a nice fluffy chest and we'll make sure we go around the outside again. So I'm going to go down here. Let my pressure just sort of break out a little bit and then just let that run. I'm not going to add down here. We just want to sort of run to that sort of point here and let that just run out naturally. So there's lots more details we now need to add in the face and one of which is the eyes. So the eyes are pretty simple really. The first one we want to go ahead and do is outline it. So we're just going to go around the bottom edge and then we'll go around the top edge in towards that point again. And then just like we did before, because we've got some really dark fur around here, we can go ahead and add in some sort of flicks in those directions. And it's quite dense, so you can add quite a big chunk of black. It's got like a almost like a completely dark outline around the eye. So we'll just add these scrapes and sort of lines and zigzags and all sorts around the outside here. And just following the curvature and the movement of the fur. So then they kind of just sort of run up this way. And then they just nicely run all the way around. And I don't like to leave any gaps around the eyes in terms of these little lines. I like them all to be a little bit joined together. And around here, it's got a little bit of a white sort of lid there as well. So we will just abide by that. And we'll just add these little dashes that all run around and link up around this side. And of course, in the eye, we need to identify the actual area of color. So we're going to go ahead and just run our pen around here and around here too. So I want to make sure that that's a nice, a nice line. So I want to just keep going until I get a nice amount of pressure, somewhat light amount of pressure. And then we'll identify the pupil as well, which is just here. So we're just going to draw in a circle for that. Doesn't have to be a perfect circle. We'll zoom out. 
and then we'll go ahead and do the same in this eye. So we're going to go ahead and outline the eye. So we'll go around the bottom area here, then round the top, and then darken up any obvious areas that need darkening up, such as there. We'll outline the eye while we're here. Let's go around there and add in the pupil as well. And then we'll go ahead and add that really beautiful dark area that this side has all the way around the eye and leaving some tiny gaps that are just right next to the eye lid up here will be okay that's fine let's go ahead and darken up around here chuck in that color all the way around making sure just to abide by the photograph as best you can for a minute Obviously, it'll depend on which dog you're doing if you're doing your own, but otherwise you should end up with something a little bit like this for the eyes. And then in the face, we're going to follow the same thing we did basically in the chest. We're going to identify certain areas. Now, the obvious one is to go down this line here, but we don't want to just draw in a line like this. That's a bit boring. And it's also obviously fur. It's not a straight line. So we're going to just go ahead and just add in some sort of zigzags up and down here, but nothing too solid. I'm going to then just add in a few more here too that just run down towards this area here and it kind of dips here it makes its way back up and then it comes down again over here and then just makes its way out towards the side so areas like this you don't really want to do a solid line you want to keep it nice and soft with the sort of very sort of thin scrapes and zigzags and squiggly lines and around the top there but nothing too solid just enough that you kind of get the impression and you understand the separation between the two areas of color. Then we're looking for areas in the face. So there's like a slightly darker patch here. There's a slight line that runs this way. But again, you wouldn't want to draw that in as a straight line. So we're just going to add in some zigzags and little scrapes. So with this particular style, you can have a lot of fun because it's nothing too serious and it's nice and easy. It's meant to have that really nice loose look to it. And you don't have to worry about it too much which is great because that's carefree and you'll just learn a lot and you'll have fun doing it instead. So I've added a few zigzags there and a couple around the top of the eye. I'll also just go ahead and add in some more around here because this area is fairly dark, but we will color it in later. So I'm just going to add a few more around the eye there. I've got a few more that I can just add over here. I'm trying to keep it super light. There's a couple of darker areas there. At the top of the head, the dog has some sort of natural creasing in the middle, so it's going to create some nice little sort of zigzags in the center here across these lines. And my pressure is so light at this point, so yours may vary quite a lot again if you don't have pressure sensitivity. So just adjust the brush as much as you can to fit your particular uh, equipment. Then, even in the lighter areas, we still want to add some of these markings. So here there's like a little tuft of color here so we can just add in a few sort of zigzag lines there there's another one just here we do have a lot more around the eye there's these stray black areas that are just making their way around here so i'm just going to add in a few of those we do have a lot of creasing and curving and movement in the skull shape so here i can just add in a few sort of zigzag lines just to follow the shape of where everything's moving along the skin and then another one that's also here too. So you're gonna to have to look for the shapes within your own pets if you're gonna give this a go with your own. I urge you to have some fun and see if you can carry on the same methods in your own work with your own pets. It's a really good way of just keep on practicing this particular style, especially if you really like it. I'm just gonna add a couple of just zigzags just up here, just a tiny few just to add in a little bit more detail. And then just take a look at your design and check that you're really happy with the balance of how it looks. So far, I'm liking how it looks. There's a couple of things I can do though on the ears. I can add in a few that just run this way just to show the movement of the fur and the direction of it. There's a couple of scrapes on there basically. Take a look over here. We can maybe add in a couple more just under here and another one there too. Overall though, I'm really happy with how that looks. So we're going to go ahead now and move on to the next stage, which is going to be coloring. So we're going to turn off the layer for a second. There's a little eyeball in the top right of your layers. You just want to hit that and turn that off. You'll be able to see your work. Then what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to reintroduce the image, but instead of a layer this time, we're going to add it as a photograph. So if we go up to our three dots and we go to the option of import, 
Also, as always with Infinite Painter, it can be a little bit temperamental, so hit save at any time you can. Just a little tip. So three dots and save, and you can always come back to it. Then we'll go ahead and hit the import option. We'll find the photograph again, so we'll hit photos. And once we found the photograph, we're gonna tap on it. Except when we get this option here, we're gonna select the option of reference, not layer. So tap on reference and you get this little floating window. You can see it's not part of your layers. You can move it around, you can make it smaller, you can make it bigger, and we can just position it where we need it, which is somewhat off to the side. And I'll explain how we're gonna utilize it as we go. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna change our brush. We're gonna tap on our brush. We're gonna to go to the option of paint and we're gonna go ahead and change it to the dry ink brush. So we're gonna scroll in here and we're gonna find the dry ink. So there's lots of different paint brushes we can use, but we're gonna use the dry ink. It's actually at the top. So we'll grab dry ink. The opacity is currently set to about 49% because I want you to be able to build the color up with this style. So make sure your opacity is set to 49%. And your color now is going to depend on where you select it from the dog because what you can do is with your reference photo if we make it nice and large for a second we're going to grab a color so you don't want to grab the darkest colors first you want to grab your lighter colors and the majority of this sort of area at the top is pretty much in this area here so if you hold down you can grab a color and you see if you hold down it changes it now if you don't have that function you can go up to your options if you go to settings and we go ahead and scroll down you can see here we've got gesture and you can do a long press for an eyedropper. The alternative is you can actually tap with your pen and grab a color. So if I go ahead and hold down, say on the nose, you'll spot my color when I let go changes to gray. So I can hold my pen down in this area and change it to that color. So just a couple of options for you there. I know everybody's software and equipment is slightly different. So using this brush, we're going to go ahead and create a new layer. I'm going to drag it underneath our line work. We're going to go to town on adding this in now be careful with this brush if we go ahead and start painting an area here for example looks great nice and light to start with but if you then let go of your pen off the screen and you go again because it's set to 49 percent you're going to get a little bit of overlap and you're going to continue to get overlap over and over again now that's a good thing we can utilize that but for certain areas you want to go ahead and add it all in in one go so i'll let you know and the first stage is adding in the majority of the face now it's actually fairly simple we're just going to start over here now the brush size for me is set to 44 pixels so i'm going to start over here and i'm going to add in the color i'm going to try it and do it all in one go without taking my pen off the screen so we're going to go down the face down into this sort of marker here down into here and this is why we drew all of our guidelines on we're going to go ahead and go up the side here now it may not like it sometimes you may have to go back to the point where you've added some color and try and just essentially smudge it around so like here it's not letting me so much and i'm trying to make sure it's all done in one movement so i'm going to go ahead and just keep dragging it up if you go out the lines that's perfectly fine but we want to just give the sort of colored area a light wash to start with a little something like this then we'll go ahead and we'll go into our dog again and we're going to go ahead and grab this dark color on the top of the ear so we'll hold down on top of there grab that color zoom out and move it over there and we'll add in the color on the top of the ear so you can make the brush size a bit bigger it's totally up to you i'm going to go up to 50. i'm just going to chuck in some color on the top of the ear here just like so getting sort of that nice loose look to it and if we go ahead and zoom in on the ear it's slightly darker in this area here compared to this edge so with the same color i'm just going to go ahead and overlap that again and just leave some of the sort of edges a little bit brighter and just use this darker tone kind of sparingly in that area we'll then go ahead and we'll go to the opposite ear for a second and using the exact same color we're just going to darken up that back area of the ear so just up here using the exact same dark tone just for a bit of sort of balance i'm just going to darken this area up in here and then maybe give it another little sort of tap of color on top. And again, we wanna keep it nice and loose so don't stress too much. We zoom in on the ear, we've got this sort of almost similar color to the head. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab a slightly lighter tone just over here, so just in this area here. Zoom out. And we'll go ahead and introduce that almost all the way around the inside here of the ear, so the outside should I say. So we'll go up here. If you let go, it's not a crime, it's fine. Just uh, be aware, obviously, of the overlap issue that we were, we were talking about earlier. 
and come down and then into this area here, just darken that up a bit more too. And then I'm going to zoom in on the ear and just grab one of the sort of light pinkish sort of colors in here and then just zoom out and just block this area in. It may come out a little bit gray because the opacity is just so low, but just bear that in mind. And maybe you can just add in like a, a little bit of extra color here just to maybe try and show something else that's happening in the ear. Now the next stage would be to add in, in my opinion, this sort of darker features. We've got the round the eyes and we've got round the nose. So round the nose, for example, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to grab one of these sort of gray, dark gray colors here, just in this area here, zoom out. And then we're just going to go ahead and add that in. You may want to sort of mess around a little bit with your opacity as well, just in case. I'm going to go ahead and just chuck this in behind the nose and down onto those sort of top area of the lips a little bit more. Now, for me, that's a little bit too strong. I want to just build up the color myself. So I'm going to bring the opacity down and we're also going to bring the flow down to about sort of 20 as well. So 25 opacity, 20 flow. I want to be in full control of my colors. I want to keep them nice and light to start with and I want to build them up where I feel is necessary. So I'm going to add that in around the nose and a little bit up here as well on the top of the nose. So again, you may have to go back and push your, your color a little bit further up. You've got to drag it along with you. Add that in there. And then because I'm now in control of the opacity again, I can go ahead and just go around the nose once again and it will start to build up. So you're adding 25% on top of 25% and you can be in control of where are the darkest areas. So I'm going around the nose a couple of times because there's a lot of darkness around it, especially here as well in the middle. I don't want that to be too dark on the sides. So we can just start there, darken up that bottom lip as well. And you can go over and over and over and over and really darken it up until you are happy with it. And that'll be good to sort of practice depending on what type of dog you decide to do it with if you decide to do it with another type of dog. Here, I just want to add in another little splash of color. Occasionally, I'm not too interested if they overlap. You may get the odd line, but that's fine. I think you can get away with a lot of them anyway. And then we've got areas again, like the eye. So with the eye, if we zoom in, we've got like a gray color and I'm going to grab that. It's slightly off gray. It's a little bit blue. And we'll go ahead and add that color in. Again, I'm going to keep the opacity really low for a minute. And I'm just going to go ahead and go around the eye, fill the whole eye itself in, but go around the eye a few times, just making sure I add that color in in the correct manner. And then I'll let go and I'll do it again. And I'll add it in in the eye in the center. It may be even easier just to make your brush size a bit bigger, maybe around 60 and just really chuck in a large amount of color in the eyes. I think this eye looks really good, especially now at this stage, because we've got in that darker tone. Once we add in the actual eye color, it'll all really come together. Let's move across to the other eye and I'm going to use exactly the same color and I'm just looking at my reference image. And again, I'm going to go around the eye. I'm just going to go around it a few times making sure we darken up the center and pretty much just in behind these lines that we drew around. I'm letting go quite a lot here, quite a lot until I end up with that lovely darker ring around the eye. In terms of the other fur, we'll come to that later. For now, I just want to darken up this area here for a moment. I will just darken this eye up a little bit more because I want them to be the same color later on. So they've got those beautiful dark rings around them. And then looking at the body, we've just got that tiny back area. So we're going to go ahead and grab a color from there. And I'm going to keep the low opacity. I'm going to keep the low opacity about 25%, if not 30. And just going to go ahead and just chuck in some color back there. That's fine. If it spills out, it spills out. That's great. And while we're working on the body, let's go ahead and zoom in. We'll grab a sort of dark gray color from the body. So some of these darker areas and where you've added your zigzags and also like underneath here around the face, we're just going to introduce some splashes of color, a little something like this, just to show the light source coming across, just some nice zigzags and just lines in towards that center point. Cause that's where all the furs go in. So we've got this big area that comes from the side up here. We've got a bit of a patch and these are all the, your markings. They're all your markings that we added. We're just now just coloring them in bring in that color across and a little bit towards the bottom. I don't want to add too much towards the bottom of the design. This is odd little scrapes like that. And that'll give you the sort of movement of the fur a little bit 
show you where it's all coming from and going to. I'm just going to darken up a tiny bit back here as well, just behind the head. And again, if you want to, you can reduce the brush size down to maybe say a smaller size, about sort of 34, and just go back over your zigzags and just add in extra tones of gray. So just make sure that they're not then a single block of color. They can be multiple blocks of color. You don't have to do that everywhere, but just enough such as like under here, around this area of the face. I can go over that a few times just to darken that up and add in some extra color over here. Just really simple sort of paint strokes really. And you can do the opposite. You can make your brush size fairly large and maybe just block in an area like under here, just to show that lighting coming across. So a few different techniques there that we can work on. Let's continue with the eyes though. And I want to get those in. So we're going to go ahead and zoom right in on the eye. And we're going to hold down and grab one of the brown colors from inside the eye and zoom out and move it out of the way. Bring your brush size back down, probably down to about 20 at this occasion, because it's such a small area. I'm going to fill in that eye with the brown. So we're going to go over and over and over till we get that sort of browny color come through. Now we do need to add a little bit of white here. So we will just go ahead and just, we can just grab white from anywhere really. Grab white, reduce the brush size down very, very small and just chuck that in here. And we're going to go over it a few times just to really make sure that that's nice and bright in there. And then we'll go ahead and zoom in on the other eye and we'll grab the color for that too. Now this one's slightly lighter because I think the light source is on the left. So we can then go ahead and block that in. And again, once I've filled it in once, I'm gonna go back over and fill it in again and again. So I really wanna make sure that these are nice and colorful in terms of the dog's actual eye color. So just filling that in like so. We're zooming out, taking a look at what we've got. I think we can just add in a ring towards the bottom a little bit more and leave sort of the pupil area a little bit brighter. Now at this point, they look a little bit flat. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're just gonna go to our top layer and create a new layer. So we're above our line work. We're just gonna go ahead and zoom in and we're gonna grab the color that is on those sort of flashy, nice, glossy highlights on the eye. So it's basically white. Now I'm just going to add it on top of our pupil here, just at the top right of it. And then I'm going to put one circle and then another circle and just kind of just keep doing little circles on top until they end up nearly sort of nice and bright like so. Makes it a little bit more realistic rather than just put a perfectly white dot. They look a little bit more realistic. Likewise, if I go over here, I can draw in a circle and then just draw in and draw in and draw in until you sort of build up a center point that's nice and bright, but the outside area is nice and light. And it's up to you. You can maybe add in another highlight if you think it's necessary. So I could add in another one over here on the left and right, just to show how much of a sort of bright room it is. Now those eyes are not just one color. If we zoom in, there's actually like a nice light, almost goldy brown color in there. And you can grab that. And if you want to, you can spend the time on this layer so you want to move back down to your colored layer for your dog work you can increase the opacity and flow a little bit and maybe just color this area in just so that you've got a good sort of uh, variety of colors in the eye it's quite important because it really does then show it's your dog and you know what your dog's eyes look like compared to everybody else so just add that in around there and it just makes those eyes pop a lot more so then what we're going to go ahead and do is pretty much the same as these areas down here in this side of the face. We're going to zoom in and we're going to grab one of the darker sort of grays where those, those contours in the face are. So I'm grabbing a gray from just in here. Grabbing a gray, so it's slightly off white. Looks great. And I'm going to make sure my opacity goes straight back down to the option of 25%-ish around that mark, maybe 30. Flow is at 30. And we're just going to go ahead and add in what we can see there. So I can see there's a bit of color up here, like so. And my brush size is very small, it's at 11. So I'm gonna increase that back to 24. That'll give me a lot more size to play with. I can see that then we've got where we've got these scribbles here and it comes up the side of the nose. There's a little bit of color there. I can see there's also a bit of color here in this area underneath. So kind of where the eye and the dark tones all start to sort of meet up. And we've got that line that comes down here. So this is where we added in those scribbles. You, you're kind of identifying to yourself where all the sort of 
highlights are and contours are in the face. A little something like this. I may add just a little one round here at the bottom of the mouth just to sort of show that running round. Likewise, I'll do the same over here too. Just a little something extra. But that side of the face now is so much less flat. It's a lot more colorful and it's a lot more sort of vibrant because we've got so many more tones in there. It looks a lot more real as well. So I'm gonna add some color up here just where the white transitions into the color. And I think that is almost everything. I'm just gonna sort of be a bit brave and just lower my color or size down, should I say, and just add in a more amount of color on these areas. So that kind of overlapping of your colors will build up. And if you find that's a little bit too blue, you can obviously then just zoom in and grab like one of the gray colors. And I can increase my brush size up and just add in a, another little area of color here and just add in extra little tones. You don't all have to make it the same color. If you think that sort of some of the contours in the dog's face are a little bit different, you can go ahead and just adjust those freely. So now I'm just expanding on those areas a little bit more and that's fine. I'm happy with that. I love the blue compared to the chest because that just sort of really shows us where to look. Now we can add a little bit of that blue into down here. So we can go over some of these with like a little bit of blue, but I wouldn't go all the way down the design. I would keep the blues towards the top if you manage to grab a blue that is. And then that way you just let the colors naturally sort of dilute towards the bottom. Now, of course, a big thing that we're not yet touching on is the face here on the right hand side. That is not the final color. So we're going to go ahead and grab one of the darker colors and I'm going to grab from this patch here in the middle of the head. It's just slightly darker than the color that we were originally working with. And we're just going to start to block in those areas. I can see that there's like a big block there. It's nice and thin down into here. And then on the side of the nose here, it's nice and big and it runs right up into the corner of the eye. I'm just going to introduce that. There's a line that just runs up a little bit in this area here. So I'm kind of like really painting at this point. Block in this area a bit more. There's a little bit of a darker tone over here. And where it gets really dark here, you're in control now. You can just start to build up the color. So because it's set to 25%, you can just build up and build up and build up. So we have this line here as well that goes round the eye and that just runs off up here. There's a couple more areas that just do just run around the backside here. We've got a little bit more around the eye and a little bit more around the top of the eye. Obviously we have a dark patch, so we'll come to that in a second. But for now, I just want to introduce these extra tones in these colorful areas and make sure that they do really match up to the, the photograph that you're going to use. So at this point, I'm really going to make sure that this area is nice and dark because it is a lot darker on this side of the dog's face. I'm going to zoom in and we've got a nice amount of color here at the top of the head to start with. So just at the top in the middle, then I can go back over some of those lines by reducing the brush size down to about 20. Go over some of these lines here just to add in some extra color, extra fur or something like this and let them all fade out at the top. So you can see there's lots of layers that are just building up on top of each other. Now I'm going to go back in a second and go back to this area here because there's a nice dark patch here just above the eye. So I'm going to grab that color, zoom out and we'll chuck in that color up here as well. So it's a nice dark patch of color. I'm going to go over it a few times and with this brush, you can be kind of streaky with it. So if you push it in certain directions, you can get quite a nice little streak effect out from it. And that dark color runs into here. So I can see that I can just get away with chucking in some more color in here and letting that run round into the eye. So just blend that round nicely. Zoom in out. Got a lovely amount of contour in the face there. That looks great. Let's then go ahead and take a look at the ear. So we've got this little color under here. So I'm going to grab that on the top edge of the ear there, zoom out, and I'm just going to block in this area completely with that color. So block in this area. I'm going to go over it a few times, but to add in more so that streaky look to it. And we'll also add some underneath the ear and really block that in, make sure it's nice and dark. And I'll probably fade that into the rest of the design. I'll just sort of blend that round a little bit into the face, into this area here. Now that is coming along really well. I'm really pleased with the colors. And look at the difference so far from here, which is just an area we're not so interested in, 
to the face. This is where we want the user to look. So we're not interested in adding stuff in areas where we're not trying to make the user look. We want them to look at the face and enjoy how beautiful this pet is. So then what we can do is go back into here and grab this color again. So hold down and grab the majority color because the initial wash that we gave him was nice and light, but at the minute it's a little bit too light. So I'm gonna go ahead and make my brush size a little bit bigger, maybe up to around that sort of 60 mark. And I'm just gonna to start to go over here until I'm happy with basically how it then starts to transition into those darker tones. Some of them do need to be darker, such as round here, but here I can start to chuck in some more color. I can even reduce the brush size down and maybe start to kind of round off the face a bit more. So kind of start to slowly overlap and overlap into this area here. If I feel that that color is not really working for me, which is kind of not at the minute, I can zoom in, I can grab a slightly darker color of that, zoom back out, and then start to, again, just sort of bring in that roundedness of the face. And I can do that also from the center here as well. This is a slightly lighter patch here. It's meant to be lighter on the forehead here, but just a little bit. We don't want to add in too much of the darker tones. So just keep messing around until you are happy with how the dog looks. So I'm really happy with how that looks. So I'm gonna go ahead and just make that really small for a second and out of the way. And I'm gonna go full screen with four fingers and we end up with today's finished design. So as always, please be sure to share your designs with me over on Instagram. I'll leave a link to them in the description down below to all my socials. So I'll leave you with that. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.